All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we have talked about general and particular solutions to differential equations, okay? So for example, um, if we were to look at, the, at um, a family of curves, so if we have, first of all, we have general versus particular, Okay, and if we have, for example, a solution to a differential equation that looks like, say, that, some sort of weird cubic, okay? If that's the solution to the differential equation, remember there's that plus C that we don't have a value for, and that plus C means that all of these curves, well, up and down values of that curve, are possible solutions to, a, to the general, uh, possible solutions to the differential equation. They are of the general form. So if we had, you know, if y is equal to x cubed plus 3, now I have a particular solution, but without the plus 3 and I just have plus c, I have that whole collection of possible curves. Right? These are all possible solutions, and we have a family of curves. Now, what if I don't have that general, if I don't have that C, I'm stuck with all of them. Okay? But if I have a specific C, now I can say where your exact curve is. So if I said C was zero, boom, now all of a sudden you're, we're talking about this curve right here in the middle. Okay. Now, if we were to look at the original equation, okay, the differential equation that this guy came out of, okay, that differential equation was y prime is equal to 3x squared. Do we agree? Okay. All right. This... If we were to think about, say, wind for a moment, if you are standing, let's take this fan that I'm not about to plug in and use, but if we think about it for a moment, okay, I'll put this fan on the altar of mathematics. Okay, now, if I turn this fan on, Elena, who is sitting directly in front of the fan, is going to feel wind directly at her. Okay? But me, standing a little bit off to the side, I'm not going to feel direct wind, right? I'm going to feel wind coming from that direction, but it might be going past me. Okay? It might be circling and swooling around as it goes throughout the room. And the closer I get to the center of the axis of this fan, the more direct the feeling I will get. And if I'm standing directly to the side of the fan, I might not feel any wind at all. Okay? All right. A slope field is a way of visualizing the general solution to a differential equation. Okay? By looking at a, gri a grid of point. What we're going to do is we're going to look at this and say, all right, if I was standing at the point 1, 1, what would my slope be? Okay? Because if we look at the, at, let's just pick a different, different equation. Let's just say y prime was equal to x squared all over y. Okay? Let's look at that differential equation. Now, what we're going to do in order to graph the slope field, guys, is we're going to walk through the points. We're not going to nearly do so many because, obviously, there's a lot of points here and we don't want to go into all of that. But we'll do a handful of points. And when you guys get the homework, assignment, there's you know, only like a dozen or so points that you're ever going to have to do. 
Okay? So what we do is we take the differential equation and we look at the coordinate. And in this case, we're going to look at the point 1, 1. And we go ahead and we plug in the coordinate into the differential equation. And we get spitting out at us the slope at that point. So y prime is equal to 1 squared all over 1. So the slope at the point 1, 1 is 1. And that's how we describe it. We don't want to draw you know, a big long line, the tangent line, but the tangent line's slope would be 1. Okay. Now we go over to the next point. y prime is 2 squared all over 1. So now my slope is 4. Much steeper slope. Okay. And obviously, now let's just do maybe this point up here. Let's do that guy. So y is equal to 1 squared all over 2. And we get 1 half. All right. What would the slope be right there? Zero, because it's going to be zero squared over one. And in fact, what can we say about, can we give it some more points? I mean, like, we know, what about this one right here? That one's also going to be zero because x is zero, right? What about the slope along the x-axis? Undefined. I'm just going to do a few points here. I'm not going to do a heck of a lot, right? Um, what about the point at 2, 2? would be 2. Zero, 0, Undefined again. OK, here. One again. And here. So what X is negative two all over a Y value of one. Oh, back two, so negative, sorry, negative one squared. One half. And then two again. It's actually not really that good. Okay. Now let's look at some negative values. These are still going to be zero. Now when I'm here... I have y prime is equal to negative 1 squared all over negative 1. And now I have a negative 1 slope now. And we'll see the same thing here. Okay. This is kind of a very turbulent looking slope field, but... Um, we will see and basically what we're creating is we're creating kind of like a wind pattern that would be experienced through the field okay like what would the slope be throughout this graph. Okay, so let's do one a little bit more for real, okay? Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and print um, some line graph for you. Hold on. All right, so let's take, for example, let's, this is one from the homework, the one you've already turned in and been 
given back. Okay. Actually, you know what? That one's not going to be nearly as exciting of a slope field. Can I change it? Let's just do this one. Okay. It's a much nicer looking one. So rearranging. So that's the general solution to it. I hope we all got that when we were doing the homework. Well, if anybody messed anything up on this one, it was the um, constant. OK. So let's go ahead and draw the slope field for this guy. OK, remember, when you're drawing the slope field, you need the slope. That's what you're get well, that's what you're getting out of it is the slope. You're going to the original equation. Okay? This is the solution to it. We're looking for the visualization of the graph itself. So I have some dot paper for you. Fancy, fancy. Should be enough for everyone to have two sheets. Yeah. Ruler. All right, so. If we're dealing with the general solution y prime is equal to xy, okay, first of all, don't use this entire sheet for a single graph. You're going to waste it. We're only going to be doing a small area. We're only going to be doing a small number of points anyway. So I would just say, like, go out three and make it a three by three by three. I'm oh, sorry, a three by three. Okay? So we're really only going to care about that much. Okay? We don't want to be doing this for the whole page. It'd be a waste of time. And also, once your slopes begin to take on reasonably large integer values, it gets it a little bit harder to see what the heck is going on. Okay, like what's the difference between looking at a slope of five and a slope of ten? They both look really, really steep. Right? They're both hard to tell. So, what's the slope at zero zero? Zero. Excuse me. And in fact, we can say that that's the case for all of the things that multiply together to get zero. True? Okay. And now, as we go through this, we'll see this has a slope of negative three, negative two, negative one. Positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive, um, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, negative, negative, negative. Slope of negative four, even steeper, and see, like I said, after a certain point, they start looking alike. It's hard to do.
Okay, so you're looking at this kind of weird looking graph, okay? But one thing that you might see, first of all, if you think about what the actual honest to God solution was, the honest to God solution was y is equal to some constant e to the x squared over 2, I think it was. Yeah, e to the x squared over 2. Okay, the graph of e to the x squared is exponential in both directions. It looks like this. Oh, wrong one. It has an almost parabolic shape to it. And depending upon what that constant is, is going to determine what curve we're actually dealing with. And if you were to actually graph that, and I'll try and do that on the computer here. So, e to the one-half x squared, 3, okay, so what I've done is I've, I'm using three different b terms, right, you know, 1, 3, and 20. And notice my use of y1, uh, you know, instead of rewriting the whole darn thing, okay? Do you see that these are different curves that all would fit on my slow field? 20, I guess, didn't even show up. Um, So the solution is visible in the slope field as kind of meandering through it. If, if like you were to say, for example, take a small feather or a piece of small paper, confetti, and put it into that wind, into that fan's breeze, you would see the path that it would fly away. That is a solution in that in in that regard in that basically we are visualized you can't see the wind it's like if you've ever seen um smoke trails like they do in um they use yeah when they're using um, um wind tunnels you know trying to find the air guys i don't know what y'all are talking about but we, we're having a conversation over here um if you have a wind tunnel and you're trying to see how how wind goes over say a model plane or some other like a you know a car that kind of thing so you can map its aerodynamic contours you have that wind chamber the car in it but you can't see the wind so they use you know a smoke trail and that smoke trail flies over the car and that basically is the same kind of effect that we're looking at here um, come on now So, something a lot, you see these? Same idea going on in here. Where you have the curves going over, in this case, an airfoil. And those would be different solutions, in a sense. Okay, we're, what we're doing is we're modeling the family of curves. And they all basically take on the same general shape. But obviously, as you see, the further you get away from the airfoil, there's less of an effect. Okay? All right. So slope fields are actually pretty straightforward. There's not a heck of a lot in there. Um, and I'm just going to say, um, any questions, just come and find me. This episode of The Ronco Show has been brought to you by the derivative of y with respect to x.